This morning you shared a video from your mother-in-law, Elizabeth. She's trapped in Gaza with your father-in-law, your brother-in-law, your niece and nephew. It's very upsetting to watch it. Elizabeth's clearly very distressed. She talks about a million people without food or water, nowhere to go, trying to get out of North Gaza. She speaks of people in hospital unable to leave, and she asks, where's humanity, where's people's hearts in the world to let this happen? Why did you share the video? It was a really hard video to watch for both my wife and I, but <clears throat> all we can do in our situation is try to tell people's story. I, I cannot tell you, Beth, how powerless and helpless I feel. Mm. Not just for my own mother-in-law and father-in-law. So what's your instinct as a family member is to protect your family. Doesn't matter who you are, whether you're first minister, whether you're a journalist, whoever you are, your first instinct is to protect your family as best you can. Mm. And I am completely powerless. The only thing I can do is share their story. You, you feel that you can't protect them, there's nothing you can do at the moment? Very powerless. All I can do is share their story. Of course I can do what I've done in the last few days, which is appeal to the international community to set up humanitarian corridors, to end collective punishment, to allow supplies to come in, to allow the innocent people of Gaza to leave. And that's all I can do. But really it is for the international community. I have to step up, not for the sake of my mother-in-law and father-in-law, but there are 2.2 million people in Gaza. We all know the conditions in Gaza. The vast majority of them have nothing to do with Hamas. And no doubt will have been appalled by what would have happened on those terrible scenes on Saturday morning. They cannot pay the price for the actions of Hamas. Elizabeth ends the video with, may God help us goodbye. Do you fear that you'll never see them again? You know, it's a worry. You know, every day we... We look at our phones uh, every night. My wife will look at our phone every hour because at night is when we're most distressed, as you can imagine. Um, and, and I do not know, I genuinely do not know if I will see my mother-in-law and father-in-law again. Nadia doesn't know if she's gonna see her mum and dad again. And all we can do is watch the news, we'll look at the rolling coverage, wait for messages, and we can go hours without seeing those messages and hope and pray. Now that's just my experience, how many people across the world are feeling the same. And what about those people in Gaza? Who again are innocent men, women and children. <clears throat> Nothing to do with those terrible attacks, disgraceful terror attacks we saw on Saturday morning. They don't know what is going to happen to them. They're being told to leave and they have no way to leave. And that's why the collective punishment is just not justified how, in any way, shape or form. How do you explain this to your little daughter about her grandparents? It's hard. I mean, our 14 year old understands the situation. She looks on social media, she sees what's happening. She's in a great deal of distress. And I try to distract her as best I can. For my four-year-old, Amal, we tell her that Granny is scared of the thunder. And she keeps asking to speak to her gran. And you know, at times we can get through, most of the time we can't. And then she keeps asking us, is Granny still scared of the thunder? And we're saying she's still scared of the thunder. And, um, you know, she asked, uh, you know, she asked last night, well, will Granny be back for Halloween? Because my, my daughter loves Halloween like every kid loves Halloween. And uh, my gran, uh, sorry, my mother-in-law uh, helps with the face painting every Halloween. And um, I honestly, I mean, we said, of course, she will be back. But in my heart, I, I don't know if she will. I'm, I'm sorry, it, it, this is obviously really, I mean, you look you look really tired. I mean, you're pr presumably not sleeping. Yeah, I think it's hard for, for all of us, anybody that has family in this situation. Look, I spent a lot of last night with um, the Jewish community in the synagogue in the south of Glasgow. And, you know, I met with the mother of Bernard Cowan. Bernard Cowan's a Scottish member of our Jewish community who was tragically killed in those terrible terrorist attacks. And she and I, we just hugged each other and we cried because that is, I suppose, at the essence of what we're dealing with is common humanity, the innocent people, be the Israeli, be the Palestinian, who have nothing to do with the geopolitical situation uh, and the ones that are being punished. And I completely understand and respect that Israel has a right to protect itself from terror, but that cannot be at the price of innocent men, women and children who have nothing to do with those attacks. And that collective punishment has to be condemned.